I feel very much the aesthetic of a Donna Tart character today. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm actually really excited for this video because I put together some singles to make a mini palette based on my absolute favorite book of all time, which is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. For those of you that don't really know, I don't talk a whole lot about my job, but I did used to work at a bookstore for a couple of years, and I've been an avid reader for my entire life. I know for a, a true book lover, like what's your favorite book, it's a little bit hard. This is definitely my favorite fiction title. I have favorites in other genres as well, but this is a book that I go back and I reread at least once a year, typically in the fall or in the winter, and I never get tired of it. I could literally actually finish reading this book, flip it around, go back to page one, and start over again because I don't know what it is about this book or maybe the timing of when I first found it and first read it that just really drew me in and I absolutely adore the writing style that Donna Tartt has. I've read a few of her other novels and I've loved them but not as much as this one. So I put together a few singles and made a little palette of six shades and I'm going to share with you that little palette. I'm wearing it on my eyes today and I'm going to explain why I chose each shade. So before we jump into the video, I hope if you like it, you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you really want to see more videos like this, creating palettes, doing looks, talking about you know, favorites other than makeup, please let me know with a like and with a comment down below. And I hope if you haven't already, you'd consider subscribing, hitting a little bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video every Monday through Friday. So we've already talked a little bit about the book. I actually first read this book when I was 17, right after high school. This was actually assigned for one of my high school classes. This was called a uh, WEX, W-E-C-S. It was Western European Cultural Studies. And it was a night class that I took and it was one of like the recommended titles for our final paper. I wrote my final paper on another title. I actually can't even remember right now. But I remember this being a recommended title that I picked up because whenever we had books that people recommended, I always got them and I would always read them. But I picked this one up while I was still in school. But afterwards, I didn't actually get to read it until after I graduated in the summer. So I read this for the first time the summer between my high school and college years. So I feel like that's a very formative time in someone's life as it is. Not to mention that this book heavily focuses on young adults. Not young adults, but early adults? They're all like in their early 20s. So I feel like I read it at the perfect time. If you don't know the plot of the book, I really don't want to spoil too much because I would love to have other people read it along. But let me go ahead and just read the back of the book and just let you know that also it's f a fairly dark book. If you know anything about Donna Tart, you know she's not afraid to jump into the darker parts of the human psyche. But there is a murder that happens on the first page. So if you're not comfortable with that, it it's there. So according to the back of the book. Under the influence of their charismatic classics professor, a group of clever, eccentric misfits at an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. But when they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality, they slip gradually from obsession to corruption and betrayal, and at last, into evil. I feel like that's not really doing the book justice. I feel like you have to give it a shot. This has a very divided fan base. Half the people that read it absolutely adore it, and it seems like the other half absolutely hate it. I fell in love with this book the first time I read it. I read it twice that summer, and then I've gone back and reread it every year since. I tend to reread it in the fall and the winter because there's this one passage especially. This book takes place in Vermont in the United States, so it's a very, very cold northern state. And the college that all these kids go to is closed for January and February because it's so cold that it costs too much to really heat everything in the winter. But the main character stays in Vermont for that winter. And the imagery and just those chapters that focus on that winter just get to me and they're so beautiful and 
terrifying. In this book, beautiful equals terrifying. You'll see that. And I find something new every time I read through this book. And I feel like this book has a major impact on like who I've become and how I see myself. And I feel like I'm getting way too into this, but I adore this book. So I was heavily inspired to actually create a palette because makeup was a love that came into my life a lot later than my love of books. I started reading before kindergarten and I've been in love with books since. So I really wanted to combine my two loves for some videos. So let me go ahead and show you the mini palette I created. So this is the palette right here. The shimmery white is getting a little bit washed out, but I will also have a picture of the shades in um, natural sunlight just so you can actually see the depth of everything. I picked six shades just because I didn't want to overwhelm myself and I also really wanted to stick to the themes of the book and also the design of the cover. I know this book does have a couple of covers, but sticking with the original cover that I was exposed to, it's not the original cover of the original book, but focusing more on the cover that is on the book that I focused the most on. So just comparing them side by side, you can see I did take some influence from the cover of the book, including the black, the yellows. It's really supposed to be like a marble white, but I've had this book so long that the pages have yellowed a bit. So I really did want to focus on that as well, like a, an overtime love. The red, of course, symbolizes some of the blood and the murder that happens. And the green I really brought in just as like a personal a personal choice because it can tie into the shades included in the cover. But also, as I said, the book does take place in Vermont, which is a very wooded, heavily wooded area. And the book does focus a lot about how they're in the wilderness and in the wild. So I really wanted to have a green in there. So let's go ahead and talk about each shade. So the first shade that I have in here, this one is from ColourPop. This is Paper Tiger. I'm going to have swatches and everything uh, just pop up on my face in between as I talk about all of these because I know the lighting in the middle of the night right now is not the best. So Paper Tiger is just a pale mustard yellow. I felt like this really captured not only the cover but also the time period this book does okay so this book was published the year i was born 1992 and it does take place that year in vermont so if you do read this book you'll see that there are no cell phones you have to use a pay phone in order to contact people people are still using typewriters in school even though computers had been out had they been out? They hadn't been widespread, but they'd been invented, at least. So I felt like this mustard shade just really fit, and I'm wearing it currently in my transition and under my lower lash line. The next shade that I chose is actually Runa. This is a Davina cosmetic single, and it's a blood red shade, and that's all I can really describe it as. It is extremely pigmented, and I felt like no palette for this book would be complete without a blood red. This book does deal with ancient Greek classics, classicism, specifically the god Dionysus and Bacchanalias, so it would not be complete without a red. And also if you look closely at the cover of the book, it is outlined with small lines of red. The next shade that I chose is a pure shimmery white called Now and Zen from Colourpop. This symbolizes the snow for that very, very compelling winter chapter set. I don't know what to call it, like a, a scene, not exactly a scene, it's, it's a passage. And I'm using this on my inner corner today. I absolutely adore this for highlighting. I don't like it for like all over the lid because it can get a bit chunky, but for highlighting it is gorgeous and it does look just like freshly fallen snow. Of course, I could not put this palette together without a deep matte black. This is Let's Do It from ColourPop. Not only is black included on the cover and mentioned throughout the book, I feel like for me, the Donna Tartt aesthetic, she's always wearing black and white, which is why I'm wearing this shirt today. I'll throw some pictures of her up here. Her style is very classic. It's very chic and classic. And for me, that's always like the black outfit, the black look, the black hat, the black hair, the black sunglasses. So I had to include a matte black. And I'm currently wearing that as my liner. 
The next shade I'll talk about is the shimmer that I'm currently wearing on my lids. This is Night Show by ColourPop. This is a shimmery gold and I really wanted to keep this in here or add this to my palette because it's almost a perfect match for the matte mustard shade that I have in the palette and I felt like the gold matched really well with not only the green that I had in the palette but also the red. Personally, I feel like this matches the cover really well, but then also the the um, the implication of fool's gold or not all that shimmers is gold as a facade falls away, which is a running theme throughout the entire book. And I really wanted to include a nice shimmer that I could use all over my lid in the palette. The last shade I'm going to be talking about is the one I've used in the majority of my look all over in my transition and on my lower lash line as well. This is a deep matte army kind of green emerald which is called Team Captain and it's by Colourpop. I really wanted to bring in a green to this palette just to kind of balance out the color story and also to symbolize the fact that this book does take place in the middle of like the woods in Vermont. But I didn't want to go with like a bright green or anything that wouldn't match the other colors too well. So I felt like this kind of deep shade just really pulled everything together without standing too much on its own. So those are all the shades that I used in my perfect palette based on this book. In my ideal world, it would come like in packaging that has either the book cover on the front or it would be... um the cigarettes lucky seven or lucky strike oh my god the cigarettes lucky strike play a huge part of symbolism in the book too so maybe it would be like a little cigarette package with that on the cover and then it would be the shades on the inside i had a whole lot of fun putting this palette together and i really enjoyed just thinking critically about the book and the cover and just Whenever you combine your interests that you don't think really fit well together, but then they end up fitting really well together, I feel you just have so much fun and you really get your creative juices flowing in a way that you wouldn't have otherwise. So thank you so much for watching. I hope if you liked it, you'll give it a thumbs up and let me know down below if you want me to do this for any other books because I do have a few other books that I absolutely adore that I could put singles together to make another dream palette for. So thank you again, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.